I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are on the road. So it is Sew Together Tuesday on the road again. We are in Ridgeland, Mississippi this week at Cotton Blossom Fabric Shop. I have to remember the whole name. Get it right. Um, so yeah. Cotton Blossom Fabric Shop. They, I've been here before, and I am really excited to be back. They have a lovely selection of stuff here for all sorts of sewing, which I love. So we're going to talk to the owners in just a second. But I just wanted to share with you just a little bit. They have a whole bunch of stuff here. All of it is available online, which is fun. One of the things that I like about this shop is that they have a whole variety of stuff. So if you've been looking for terry cloth, they have it here. If you've been looking for silky satin, they have it here. They have embrace. And they do the same thing with all of the other sort of stuff. Like I found Batiste here, which made me super happy. So I love that this is a very well-rounded shop. Also, a baby lock dealer. So I get to use my machine. I'm really excited about it today. So come on over. Let's look around just a little bit at the store. You can see it's super brightly colored. It's very fun. And come on in. So these are the owners, right? You're both the owners? Yes. yes. Okay. Mother so daughter. Mother daughter duo. So this is Robin, Kathy. Okay. And how long have you guys owned the shop then? We started about 10 years, 10 years ago. ago. Okay. Yeah. With three bolts of fabric. About. In the room over my garage. <laughs> That's not got it. <laughs> so it was kind of a slow start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we have four thousand volts of average. Are you serious? Seven thousand square feet. Wow. Yeah. So how long were you in your house? Um, a couple of years. We okay. outgrew the room over the garage, filled up my entire house except for two rooms full of four to ceiling fabric. <laughs> in my home. And I said, this has got to stop. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we built a little studio warehouse on nice. my farm. Moved all the fabric in there. And okay. then people started knocking on the door at the farm. Can we come shop in your fabric? Right. Well, we were just an online store. Oh. So we were shipping all and over then people the showed up. So people were starting to show up. And we're like, no, we're not set up for that. And we said, well, you know. Why not? Move into town. So how long have you been in this location? Five four, years. Four years here. Uh, well, I don't know. Going on four or five, five years. Lot. Something like that. Yeah. And I was here two years ago. We just right. talked about it the other day. Right. Is it almost exactly two years ago? That's I was right. here like to the day. That's right. Um, right. Pretty crazy. So I'm yeah. really excited to be back. Things are very much the same, which is fun. Yeah. Um, so you guys have a bunch of baby locks. That's what you, you sell, on. right? Full on baby locks. Mm -hmm. Great. And yep. those, you have used machines and all that sort of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So I get to sell my baby lock. She showed me a new little tool it's what do you call it it's the new compact vigil dual feed walking foot so we're going to deal with that later i'm pretty excited because i haven't tried it yet and it's the one thing that i'm like oh this could improve things so oh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later shannon cuddle it is the bomb it is yeah. right really nice. nice right it is so good so you guys have kits we're making the cuddle strip quilt today the crazy eight you guys have some kits available we do right and yeah. they're on your website they're which on is our website. Right, Cotton Blossom Farm, because we started on the farm. Right. So cottonblossomfarm.com, one farm. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. And is there any sort of a deal that you're given? They're on sale for seventy nine ninety nine. dollars They're doing the crazy eight quilt today. So Good. Super excited. And you've got backings on there as well? Yeah, we have backings as well. See? Yes. Perfect. So yes. if you're at home and you're sewing along, this is where you can get all that stuff. And they've got a ton of notions. We'll talk about it because, it, yeah, I'm super yes. happy here. It's great. It's gonna okay. be fun. Maybe I can stay next week. No, we have another place. You can stay. You can stay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. The, you know what I'm really excited about is you doing the binding because I have a confession to make. Because you were here two years ago, right. I took your class, <laughs> and I still have not finished my wee one quilt. It's, 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 so it's, it's big. I still haven't finished it. Okay, so I'm glad you're here, and I'm gonna be say, hey, when you're about to do binding, you say, hey, Robin, I right. need you in here. Okay, in yeah. here. Yeah. Come watch. Yeah. This is the part. This okay. Part. Yeah. Okay. So did you get it trimmed? You're yeah, at that point. Already, I mean, it's, I got 15 it's minutes left. It's got it. wonder clips all around the edge. It's oh my <laughs> goodness! All right, well, we're gonna get her finished on the quilt. Yeah, yeah. Let's head into the classroom, and that's where we're gonna do all of the sewing today, and we'll get started on that kit. Okay. All right. So come on, see if you can follow me. I'll walk this way. Okay. See, and then I can walk backward, and you don't have to walk backward. How's I'm that? I'm gonna follow you. That's that way. pretty good. So we're gonna come through the thread because that's the most colorful place. I want to show you just a little bit more of the stores we're coming in. So they've got a whole bunch of embrace that's here, which is fabulous. I love it. Some of the stuff that's been harder to find. Get it while you can. Okay. So come on in. Check out oh, that yeah, yeah. notions wall. The notions wall is fabulous. I'm very excited about that notion wall. Okay. All right. You ready? Right. Check okay. out what's going on in here. We have a full yeah. crew. Long oh, we'll start in here. There we go. Hi, folks. <laughs> nice. All right. Wanna, wanna All right. Come on into the classroom. Sick. So they have a Move great slow. classroom. 
here. And look at all these folks. Hey, say hi, everybody. Yep. <laughs> so come on in. All right. So let me get back over here. And we will talk about our project. So thank you to the folks at Cotton Blossom for having me back and bringing the whole crew, which is really fun because we have a lot of people here today. It's great. So the project that we're working on today is the Cuddle Strip Quilt. The Crazy Eight is the one that we're doing, uh, which is the biggest strip quilt we have. It's also beautiful. And they're all like kind of adultish. Do you want to grab me a couple other kits variations? We can show the other um, varieties. I love the uh, Crazy Eight. The first one I did was the Violetta, and it's a purple one. I made it years ago when I first got hired by the company, and I love this size. It's beautiful, and it's one that people buy a lot, but sometimes they get a little, oh, yeah, we're going to hold Let's this baby up. Um, but yeah, sometimes people get intimidated by it. You can come over here. It'll be easier. Here we go. Um, they get intimidated by it because it is large, so it's got, you know, 60-inch wide strips here that we're doing. It's totally doable, and we're going to talk about some of the ways that we can change the way that we put it together um, to make it to make it work. So you can see it's a bunch of different strips sewn together. This one has batting in it, so it's fairly heavy. Okay, we'll talk about that a little All bit more. Right. Okay, you ready? All right, thank you. Okay, so let's oh, show look some at of all these. these so variations. see, there's more than just the one. So I, I brought the one to make, but they've got a whole variety of them. And I really like this because one, once you learn how to do it, you can absolutely make it whatever fabrics you want. So we have kits that we've chosen some fabrics that go together that look nice. This is so my favorite color, right? I'm not even oh, a pink girl, oh, yeah. and I love this color Rose, so much. Rose water. So good. Uh, but I really like this style because you can buy a kit that has all the fabrics that mix match together that look great or you can just make your own choices and find some that you like but learning how to put it together is helpful okay all right so i want my kit i'm going to move these over here we'll talk more about that blanket in a bit okay all right so i want to show you a little bit about how the kit is put together yes already we have a question what happens if you share the video? Oh, gosh. See, I just, I forget this stuff every time. Really, it's why we have him. Um, so, that's yes. my only reason for me. Please. <laughs> and holding the camera. I really <laughs> couldn't do it myself. <laughs> so, please, share the video um, to your friends on your Facebook page, whatever, um, to your favorite sewing groups, all of that good stuff. Share the video. At the end, we will choose a winner, and you will get a beginner box. That's what we're giving away this month. It is National Quilting Month, so don't forget. You can go to our blog. You can download the pattern. You can enter to win um, the how National many, Quilting Month. Three, three winners. Three winners. Grand prize winners. Three winners. Forty five hundred dollars in prizes that they're giving up between those three people. It is a big one, and I love that there are three winners because it means that we all have a little bit more chance to win. Well, except for me and Hawk, because we have no chance. <laughs> but you do, so please uh, go over to the not blog. Eligible? No, go over to the blog, enter to win, and it's a great price with all sorts of gifts from our vendor partners. So very fun, lasts all month. So make sure that you sign up by the end of the month. Was that all I was supposed to say? I think we're good now. Okay, good. Whew, caught back up. All right, let's talk about the kit then. The kit is the strip quilt. It's a strip quilt. It's the crazy eight because there are eight strips eight colors eight some eight pre-cut ten inch strips there we go there's eight strips that we cut up and make this quilt okay y'all can't hear it on the thing but the rain is intense here today oh yeah it's pouring wow. outside i'm from the northwest and this is still a lot of rain uh <laughs> I'm impressed. so in the kit you open this oh and thunder nice. this is exciting i know it's like on cue it was like all right you thought that was good Watch this. <laughs> okay. So in the box, let me open this up. And you're going to find, so I want to talk through a little bit of this because a lot of times people get these kits we were talking about before. They get it and they pet it and they're like, this is so nice. And then they just put this back. <laughs> they put it in the cupboard and they leave it until they want to pet it again because they're too afraid to actually tackle the thing. So let's tackle the thing. All right. We've got some strips in here. So we should have eight strips. Okay. Got some strips, some strips, some strips. These are all 10 inches. So these are the same as our sweet strips. Those are 10 inch strips. So you could absolutely take a sweet strip pack. Okay. 
and do the same sort of thing. So I'm gonna show you inside if I can get the pattern out. You have a little pattern that tells you basically how to, how to put it together, okay? Some layouts, oh, it's the same thing that we have there. Great, so there are some layout variations. You could do it super simple and just sew all your strips together. Just put them in whatever order you want, stick them together. Or you can cut them up in various forms, okay? So basically in any of our patterns, we would suggest because it's a 10 inch strip, you can either cut it in half for five inches or in quarters for two and a half inches. All right. So there are some variations on it. And then you'll have some more tip sheets. This is the important part to me is keeping track of this. So if I want to put it together in this way, I need to cut the strips in this order. All right. So I know my, my, I want to say that's fun, but it's not it. Whichever one this one is. <laughs> this <laughs> that one right there. Yeah, that one. <laughs> this fabric, I have three of them, and they need to stay whole. So this is the way that I'm going to tackle my quilt always, is I just go ahead and start divvying it up. All right. Oh, we didn't do the ingredients. We'll do that in just a second, Michael. Okay. So I've got those. I've got this one here. I know this is the Heather. Heather Fog, because it's one of my favorites. That also stays whole. Okay, so this one here could look a little bit confusing, but it's really just folded in half. Okay, so it's a 10 inch strip that was just folded. So we're gonna keep that. All right, then I've got this one here is also a 10 inch strip that I can see this is the one that's been cut into quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one and I need to cut this one. So I'm gonna put it to the side. This is the darker one and it needs to be cut into halves. I've got two of those, okay? Then I have this other one, all right? So this other one, whichever one is not the 10 inch strip and it might be a 10 inch strip for all I know, I'll open it up. But we have a third one and that is for the binding, okay? So with these kits, you always get the binding with it, which is important to remember. The thing you don't get is the backing, okay? So these are your backing choices. If you look at the quilt kits, they'll always show you what it should look like if you put it together this way, what it could look like if you put it together this way, what the finish size is, is here. And that's an ish. Remember, you don't have to get it exactly here. Nobody's going to measure it ever again. And these are your backing fabric colors. So here they have like ash and steel would work well if you used any of the Lux Cuddles in those colors. Or you could use Lux Cuddle Frosted High Titan, which is, I think, what we use in our sample. Yeah. Let's see if I can drag it over oh, here. I'm just gonna Hold come on. over here. There we go. Here. Okay. So that's the backing. So that's that's what that one. So if you wanted to make one just like our sample, that's what you would choose. Okay. Lux Cuddle Hide Titan. I chose Fawn in silver because I like it. So that's we'll see the, how that one that's works. the backing fabric right there. This is the backing uh, fabric yeah. that I chose. All right. Nice. So let's go to the ingredients list so we can see everything that we need if we get the kit. All right. So you're going to need to get the, the kit and you're going to need to get two yards of cuddle for the backing. I would suggest that you get a Lux cuddle because it will hide all of your not quite perfect stitching. If you get a C3, a cuddle three, which is the thinner stuff. It's a little bit easier to sew sometimes, but it also will show all of your stitching. So if your stitching isn't straight, that's an issue. Um, and I like to hide all the mistakes I can in the fabric. So you wanna make sure that you've got two yards of fabric for that. A 9014 stretch needle, of course, we use them by Schmetz. Polyester thread, I've got Mettler Metrocene. A felt tip marker or ballpoint pen will be marking on the fabric. I'm just gonna use a Sharpie today. Rotary cutter and mat, if you want to use a rotary cutter for these, a craft knife, I use the Ulfa SAC-1 uh, to cut all of my Lux cuddles. Micro serrated scissors are really good for little cuts and for trimming your threads. Long flower head pins, of course, the ones from Clover are the ones that I like. Jumbo fabric clips from Clover, walking foot, basting spray. Oh, I forgot to put it, it's the OD505. For sure, use that one. And then you'll also want to download our Binding with Cuddle booklet that is available on our website. So if you go to our website, if you go to the blog, then you're going to find the pattern for uh, the um, Crazy 8, as well as a link to our Binding with Cuddle booklet. Okay, there's also a video that you can watch. We'll talk a little bit about binding at the end, but there's also a video where we talk at length. I really talk a lot. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> in that video, I talk a lot about cuddle binding. So you can watch that video as well to get more information. Okay, so get yourself prepped for that. I'll pass that URL on to Robin and she can finish her binding. <laughs> it is sometimes you get to a point where you're like, I don't know, I now I can't go any further. It's just finding the time. Uh, okay, so let's open this up because remember I have three of these. So these are ones I don't cut. I'm going to put them over here. Then I have three of these and I want to make sure that they're all the same size. And this I think is the Luna. We always talk about, I'm not perfect at the names. Well, I just only know how to sew skews. them. I mean, I'm really? not sure how you're supposed to. I know how to sew them. I don't always know what their names are. But I said, this really pretty fabric right here. <laughs> okay, so I can see by putting these out that I have one that is wider. Okay, so these two are the same width. This one is not. It's just a little bit. All bigger. right, so this is what I really like to do is I like to kind of go through my stuff first and make sure I've got it figured out. One of the mistakes that I see most often when I'm teaching a strip quilt class is that people will cut up the binding to use as a strip because they haven't kind of walked through everything first and figured out which one is their binding. So then they cut that up and then realize that they've cut up their binding. This is especially a problem if you're doing something like a Bambino or the Wee One, which is a 27 inch wide, your binding will be the only one that's 60 inches wide. And when you cut up your binding, then now you're piecing small pieces. So don't do it. Lay everything out first. Figure out what you have to cut. So I know I have to cut binding out of this one. You could go ahead and use like little post-it notes or something um, to kind of mark things if you wanted to. This is my binding. So I'm going to leave that be right now. This one is the strips that are, if you look on here, these are my big strips. And those are five inch strips. And that's what it tells me on the pattern. So I need to cut the four these. Dark, the four dark ones. The four dark ones. Got it. Okay. So that one is, because um, we know we have two of them. If I make four, it's going to be half of this width. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this. And I'm just going to cut one of them because we're not going to get through this whole quilt today. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So this one is my binding. I'm going to put this in the box. So I don't want to get myself confused. So I'm going to put the binding away. Squirrel. Yes. I'll squirrel that away until later, and then I'm not going to mess anything up. Oh, look. That's my job. And I forgot. these. Some of these come with little tags. Oh, nice. I've seen it in a few of the kits. They're super cute. Oh, and it's got washing instructions. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So if you wanted to, like, gift them, you totally could. Okay. It doesn't come in all the kits, and I don't know what the – sorry, I don't know what the rule is for which kits they come in, but I've seen them in a few classes where the, the little tag comes in. Supply out. chain. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Just like which everybody ones have it? else's answer okay. for everything right now. Yeah, exactly. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to mark the fabric so that I can cut it. I have two rulers here. One of them I have to buy because I found this here and I was like, I need this because Hawk has heard me complain lots of times about needing a longer ruler because cuddle is 60 inches wide and most of the rulers are 24 inches long. That does not. I can't fold it in half and mark the whole thing, which means I end up having to slide. So I found a 36 inch ruler here and added that to my shopping list. So we're going to use it today. I'm going to make it mine. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half right now because it's a lot of, a lot of length. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark one side at a time. The first thing I want to do, so I'm going to move my now considered short ruler <laughs> over there. And I'm going to measure this. Okay. This you look at this, this is about 10 and a half inches. Okay. It's supposed to technically be a 10 inch strip. We always give you a little bit extra in the kits so that if there's some wobble, you're fine. You could straighten this up if you wanted to. I never see any reason to do so. I just refuse to do it. Oh, I just found out a good reason to have my ruler, but it's okay. What is the brand of that 26 it or is 36 inch ruler? An Ellipha. Okay, let's get it over top of the weight. Yeah, there, there we, go. we go. There you go, folks. That's your that's your 36 inch. There you ruler. go. I also did see one from Creative Grids that they had here too. That is also, and it's um, I think a two and a half inch, maybe, um, 36 inches. So they had a couple of them. They just had more of these, so I got one of these. But the cool thing about the Ellipha, I'll show you real quick, 
is that it has, which is how it got it na its name, is it has a lip edge. So you can square it up. Oh. Um, yeah. So it works kind of like a T-square. Pink. Okay. Gotcha. So pretty cool. So I found one. I'm buying it. Nice. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this first so I can mark it all the way across. Just got my Sharpie. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut it in half. So I don't ever straighten it up and make it exactly 10 inches. It just goes against everything I stand for. Use all, so. <laughs> use all the fabric you can. Make one cut. It'll be fine. Cut exactly. Make one cut. I don't want to <laughs> do three. I really don't. As much as I love working with this fabric, cutting it is not my favorite part. So I'm marking this. It's 10 and a half inches. I'm marking it at four, five and a quarter because I'm just trying to do it in half. All right. I forgot if you have any questions, please share them. I will answer them as soon as Hawk reads them to me. We are working that out. Everything's good so far. Okay, good. And uh, we have uh, Jackie over on YouTube answering comments and Ellen over on Facebook answering comments. So thank you to them as well. Okay, so I'm just going, lining this up from the little marks that I made to try to keep this straight and on that fold. And I'm just going to draw right along there. Okay. So now people always ask me, can I just cut it with two layers? You can, but I don't recommend that you do. <laughs> I won't stop you, but um, I will tell you that's what you get <laughs> when you cut it and it's not straight. Okay. So what happens when you cut it and it has two layers is these don't sit the back to back. The backings don't sit next to each other. They're sort of like they're apart from each other because you have so much fluff in between. So that when you cut it, this doesn't necessarily go straight down. If you're cutting it and your angle, like I'm cutting it from this side, so my angle is sort of going to be that direction slightly, that it will push the fabric a little bit and they'll get off. So then when you cut that bottom layer, the top layer has moved slightly. Sometimes it doesn't matter at all and you can totally do it. If you want to be more accurate with it, that's the way to do it. I've had it slip fairly badly before and that sort of scarred me that I was like, not doing that again. Okay, that's the biggest issue is that it will shift on you. So I try to avoid doing that, but it does mean it takes you a little bit longer because now I did one half and now I have to do the other half. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this again at five and a half or five and a quarter. Sorry, five and a quarter. We'll get this right. Let me remeasure that right here because this I. I don't know how I can tell these things, but at this point I've seen it enough that I was like, this got a little bit smaller and it did. It's an eighth of an inch smaller here. So instead of being 10 and a half right here, it's 10 and three eighths. I'm still going to cut it at five and a quarter. Oops, four and a quarter. Not right. So you see, we're back here at 10 and a half. Okay. So I'm not going to care. There's going to be one side that's an eighth of an inch tinier. Uh, and if you were quilting, that would matter. But because we're, we're cuddle quilting. It doesn't really matter. So there are certain things. This is one of the things that I really like about cuddle is there are times that we get to be careful and there are times that we don't have to be. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that line all the way across. So now I think I'll cut the, um, there was two ways I'm going to cut today. And so I'm trying to think out loud which one I'll do first. And I think I will do my blade. If I can find it. I haven't even started sewing. How did I lose it already? Oh, because I used it to open the box. That's uh -huh. why. <laughs> I, like as soon as I use it, I lose it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to cut along here. So this is that little blade that I like so much. This is the Olfa. And I have a box here. So there are a box, a package. So you guys can see what it looks like. Okay, because there are a couple different versions that are out there that are fairly similar. This is the one I like. Here's the and number that you're looking for. This is the important part. Okay, they have them available here. I just got this off the wall. So they have this one. The important part is that this blade is a 30 degree blade, and you can find them that are a 60 degree blade, and they look more like the picture below. Okay, so you see the angle of this blade that actually makes a big difference that it's that sharp. So I really recommend getting this one. All right. The cool thing, too, is you get one blade here that has seven blades in one. You can also buy 
replacement blades that come in a pack. And then you have blades for days. Man. All right. Okay. So that blade is kind of my favorite thing ever. I'm just going to go and I'm going to hold this down and I'm going to drag this right along here along the back of the fabric. And it just slices the backing. And it will cut some of the front. I will tell you when you switch the blade out and you put a brand new blade in, it cuts more of the front because it's super sharp. There's a sweet spot. And uh, it cuts like this. So you can see I end up having some nap on both sides that hasn't cut. That's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this whole thing down here. So you can absolutely cut this with a rotary cutter. You just end up with a mess. So if I cut it with the blade, once I move this, you'll see there's very little mess that happens with this. I could take it outside, give it a good shake, do the dryer trick, which What's the I dryer would do. Trick? Yeah, so I would do that if I were doing this whole quilt and I were doing it at home, I would cut all of my strips and then I would throw them in the dryer with a wet washcloth, let it tumble around for a few minutes and knock off all of the cuddle dust. It works really, really well to get all the cuddle dust off so that when you're sewing, you don't have all the mess in your machine. Because one of the more common questions I get is, does it ruin your machine? It does not. I have been sewing on this machine for a couple of years now, pretty hardcore with the cuddle, and it is still running beautifully. The biggest, uh, wow, that's some thunder. I wish you guys could hear it on at home. Um, Big butter boom. I'm like, oh, where, where there's weather again. It's so good. Um, but y if you do the dryer trick, it really does help. And it keeps the, the nap dust, the cuddle dust out of your machine. Okay, so look, if I move this, you can see how much cuddle dust has come off. And it really is basically nothing. I don't see anything on your okay. mat. Oh, I can shake a you little. Shake it, you get a I little. can get some off. Okay, so I'm going to give it a little shake over here and get it any that fell off so it's kind of loose on there and just get it off okay that works really well to be able to get the nap off i want to remind you if you've watched before we've talked about it that the stretch of the fabric is this way does not stretch this way but if you stretch it it will start to curl so when you're trying to get this nap off i recommend that you pull it out this direction so pull it this is the side i cut so i would pull it like this don't drag it down Okay, because it'll stretch it and make it curl. So you can see this side was cut with a rotary cutter. And it cuts it off completely. Gives it a little haircut. Gives it a little haircut, it's which kinda, isn't a big deal on this project at all. Because it'll be in the seam allowance. It's in a seam allowance. Right. But this way is just met less mess for me. And that's really what I prefer. Mostly because right now we're doing all in an RV. So <laughs> the less mess we have in there, the better. Okay, so now I've got my strips, those strips cut. I would do this twice so I can have four of those um, dark gray strips. And then I need to cut this one into quarters. And I'm going to cut this one with rotary cutter so we can see the difference. I do have the vacuum handy. All right. Because we're going to need it. All right. So again, I'm going to fold this so that I can just get it all onto the board for right now. Okay. Measure this. See what we got. Just about 10 and a half, which is technically what it should be. So I'm going to mark this again at five and a quarter. And then remember, this is the one that I'm div dividing into four pieces. So that's this one, this one, this one, this one. I know I divide it into four because I only have one strip. So I have four strips. I need to get four strips out of this one. Okay, so this darker one, I cut it at five inches because I had two strips to mm -hmm. make into four pieces. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, because sometimes people get confused with, I don't know which ones to cut extra. This is how. So I'm like, okay. And they're always going to be divisions of 10. So 10 inches, five inches, two and a half inches. Got it. All right. So I'm going to mark that. So I'm going to mark two and a half would be five. So just over two and a half, right? Mm-hmm. Thanks for double checking my math. I appreciate it. So I just squished this down so that five inches was on the line because that's easier for me to count two and a half and a little. All right. <clears throat> so you're, so I'm you're do cutting that first. three times. So you're going yes. ahead and marking all three ticks. Exactly. So at five and a quarter 
and then a two and five eighths. Okay. I'm going to mark it over here, and then I'm going to slide my ruler down to five inches. Really, really fancy carpenters would say two and a half inches strong. Is that what that is? Yeah. But it's a whole eighth of an inch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot. Eighth of an inch. If I mean, if you're a quilter, oops, if you're a quilter, you know, an eighth of an inch is, is a bit. Okay. So now, I think I told you my dad and I used to get into like competitions to see, because he's a woodworker, to see who could, who could measure thing with their eyes better. Oh, yeah. I think my dad and I, who was also a woodworker, <laughs> uh, definitely had those contests. So I'd be well. like, no, no, that's, that's one and three eighths. You're like, no, one and a half. Yeah. Get the ruler. <laughs> Get the ruler. Here we go. <laughs> we both need to know. Okay, so now I'm just making these lines match. Let's do it again. So I always mark these. So you could technically, you could put it at two and a half and cut it and two and a half and cut it and two and a half and cut it. But the thing that happens when I do that is usually something slips, something gets mismarked. And then I have a strip that is two and a half in one part and not even close in another. All right. So I'm marking backwards now because the other end of my rulers over there. So probably going to confuse somebody. Sorry. Okay. And then two and a half and a little. All right. I'll do one more over here. This all seems very methodical. It is. And once you get this part figured out, then it's just to the sewing part. Okay. And uh, we're going to work through part of this today. Obviously, I'm going to try to get through all of the steps so you can see that. So one, two and a half. Um, but I made this, the first one I made, I made it in like um, three after work sessions. So I did it in the evening. So it's a pretty quick quilt. And uh, I like it for that reason is like, you're going to spend some time cutting, but then really it's pretty, pretty easy, easy to make. The way that we're going to do it today is with the quilt as you go method which is nice. We're actually not going to use batting today, which is pretty exciting because people always ask about that. But you absolutely can use batting. Um, and we're going to talk about another another way you could do it. So another get that way, marked. A third, a third a way. Third way. A third way. Okay. okay. So you can buy this kit and do all sorts of fun things with it. Okay. So now I've got my lines marked. I know that these are right. Okay, now you can do a few different ways. You can use your scissors and you could cut along this line, which the, these are the Karen K. Buckley's. Mine are looking very well used at this point, which are these guys. That's what the package looks like. You want to cut get the blue ones are the ones that I like the best because they have a short blade and the squishy handles. And, and, micro -serrated. and a micro serrated blade. So they have squishy little squishy little handles, which makes them comfortable in your hand. So mm -hmm. they don't pinch on your hand right here. They kind of stretch for you, um, which drives me crazy when they hurt my hands. Um, and then these little blades in here are micro serrated. So they grab the oh, cuddle really nicely. Boy, I almost got it. To, I almost got it. To focus. Almost got it to focus. Nope. Nope. But Not believe us, it. there yeah. are tiny little serrations in that blade. <laughs> it's hard to tell, but there are. Um, I also like these guys are the Famori ones, and they have um, an even shorter blade. So these work really well for making little bitty cuts, especially in the long lux cuddles. So what's the action with those if you're cutting from the back and you're always cutting cuddle from the back? I always cut cuddle from the back because that's where I drew my lines. So you're just snip, snip, snip. And as soon as you feel it, like sort of starting to pick up a little bit of the nap, you yep. back off and take another snip. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just trying to get it underneath there and cut it. So this is definitely the more tedious way. I like the blade a lot. Um, you can also use a rotary cutter. So let's try that. Let's make, uh -huh. let's, let's make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have, a, I have a vacuum nearby. It's fine. Uh, so when I am at home, um, I have some stuff. And I didn't even look to see if they have it here. But lots of quilt shops have it called Grippy. That is also from Odif. And it's a, um, a spray that you can put on the back of your rulers. And I like it a lot. I should have looked. I think I might have some somewhere. Do you guys have it? Okay, great. So they um, they do have it. I think it, it might be in the back there, of it. 
we're not gonna Robin, could it. I get you to dig through my bag over here and see if I have it? Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, why don't she, why don't we just have her get it off the well, wall? Because then we'll know. Because maybe I right. don't know where everything's at. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna look. You show how pretty this fabric is, and I'm gonna look because I want to use it. All right. Okay. So that's my thing is I would like to use it if I have it, and I like drag all this stuff along with us. All right, bear with me. Okay, we're hold gonna, on. Just, we're, just, we're just gonna watch me pet this. Apparently. And it's probably in another. Oh yeah. Oh okay. nice. Do you have one that's open by chance? No. Nope. You can open that one. Okay, I'm gonna open it then. You told me I could. Okay, <laughs> so this is the product. Thanks. That was great. I love this stuff. So the way that it works, so you take, how does it, it doesn't have a top on it. I'm Wait so glad minute. I opened that I, one. Is it in there? No. No. Well, that was magical. See, this is how things go wrong every time. We're like, we have no idea what's coming. Like, yeah, no idea. Like, hey, take two. Let's try this one. Uh -oh. And maybe you can ask uh, OD to set yeah, you yeah. a new lid. Oh, look, there, there we go. Is. That's, that's what, what it's supposed to look like. like. I'm like, see, that's a big lid to lose. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, it's not stuck inside there. All and right. It, and it was definitely like <laughs> still sealed. The cap yeah, was still yeah. sealed. I don't know what happened. Anyway, yeah. this is the stuff. So we're going to use this on the back of my ruler because I want to show you how this works. Okay. And I'm just going to spray it on here. It's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put this on the back of my ruler. I'm just going to spray it a little bit. Not a ton. Not a ton, but I'm going to put it all the way down the ruler. Did you find it? No. That's so I will say this one smells more than, well, smells. Um, and OD505 does not smell at all. That is totally true. Yeah. So now the way that this works is fabulous because once I get it on here, it doesn't move. And you I didn't need to really to let that dry or anything. Under you side. let it dry for a second, but yeah. it was fine. Okay. Okay. It does seem to be considerably more grippy now. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So what happens is that it doesn't slide on your fabric anymore. So when you saw that I was putting it on there, like, if I start to push on this at all, it can't, I can't move it. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so that's super great for things like this, where this fabric is tends to be slick anyway. So if I put a ruler on here, and especially one that's this long, as soon as I go and it starts to twist on me, I've kind of lost control. So now I won't, which is great. And I have a 36 inch ruler now, so I can go all the way across. All right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it with the rotary. I told you I wanted to change oh, this. Oh yeah, because the la because last week we um before you do that, just to see how bad it cuts. You said you wanted to, oh, wanted to try that. I was going to show you guys. Yeah, demo. This see, is this is when you know for. that your rotary cutter needs love. So this is the problem. So what happens is like the top level cut just fine. The bottom level didn't. So I can go back over here and I can recut it. But if you're trying to be anywhere, you know, close to accurate, it's not going to be exactly right because I moved it. I can't see through the nap. And then what happens is every time that this, see, there's the stupid part there. Um, what happens is when it, that happens, then the next one, you push harder. So you push harder and harder on your thing. And then what happens is you get this, where you get the nap stuck in your board. Oh, yeah. So that's what happens when you're pushing too hard because the blade has gotten a little bit dull and then these get stuck in your mat and it will ruin your mat a lot faster. Okay. So as soon as you see that starting to happen, stop, change your blade. Okay. And, uh, and fix that before it gets too much further. So that's, thank you. I forgot about that. Oh, good. And uh, all right. does Alpha sharpen these blades? I don't believe so, okay. and I know there are some different tools that you can get for sharpening them. Personally, I don't believe in sharpening my rotary cutter blades. All right. It goes against something in me. I've never seen it work very well, so there we go. So I'm going to take that blade off. That probably freaked people out. Sorry. It happened very quickly, and I don't see any blood, so I think we're probably okay. We're good. Okay, <laughs> so here's my new one. I can tell this is a new one because there's no... Um, I don't know what you would call these wear marks. Uh -huh. All right. The other thing that I like to do when I've used a blade and it's on the other side is I mark a little X on it to know that this is uh, a blade that is a bad one. So I just put them in here and I usually stick them at the bottom. 
So oh, that my, one's already got an X right, on it. Right, so I've got a stack got now it. of X ones, and these are all bad. So then I can actually just throw this away and feel okay about it because it's tucked into something safe. Okay, so now I've got my blade. Put this on here. I'll put this on here. Hold on, I have to squish it off this side. Got it. Okay. You slid it off the side and stuck your finger underneath of it. Over yeah, to edge. catch it. So I'm and I put my finger down to hold it so that it stays up and then catch my finger underneath the blade. You don't want to catch your finger on the side of the blade. So now there what's going on? Stories. What's your trick here? So now we're putting the little, I call it a cowboy hat. We're putting that back on. We want it to fit like a cowboy hat. Okay. Can you see that little U? You can see it. All right. And the, then I want to it, put this on so that this has a little divot there. And I'm going to put that divot right onto the cowboy hat. So it's flat on the top, divot on the bottom. All right. This is really important. I think um, the last class that we were at, I probably saw three or four rotary cutters that were assembled wrong. And so when they don't cut right, it's usually, sorry, it's usually user error. It happens. Uh, <laughs> the last one, we actually had a, um, one lady ended up having two blades on. And that happens sometimes when you like pull them out and they stick together. Oh, because sometimes they, when they're packaged, they have a little oil. They right? have a little oil and they stick together. And if you do that, it won't cut very straight and you'll get a weird little thing that happens. So you need to be uh, extra careful of that. Okay. Are we ready? So I got my blade. We're ready to uh, cut. All right. Means I don't have to push very hard because it's going to cut beautifully. I can hear it cutting. Oh, it's so good. Okay. Look at that. See, look at how nicely that cut. Oh, yeah. And you weren't, right. you weren't pushing at all. No, I'm going to do two of these. Okay, we're going to see if I can get the noise. Oh, it's like fresh scissors. It's so good. So good. All right. We want that sound. But you can already see the difference in the mess that I'll get from this versus the blade. And this is nothing. Just wait. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try to squish this over so I can start again. I'm going to keep this as straight as I can. So some people I know will try to line it up with their mat to get it straight. We get a lot of questions about, like, it seems like the lines are crooked. And it really is just because it's a knit fabric and it's moved on you. So be aware that it likes to, to shift and shimmy on you. But the line you drew is the line you follow. The line you drew is the line you follow because you should have laid it out nice and straight the first time. And even if you didn't, it is your line now. <laughs> okay. No All second right. guessing yourself. No. Not at this stage. All right. So now I've got those <clears throat> cuts. All right. Here comes the moment of truth. All of that mess. Okay, so you can see it just falls off more. When I'm doing this, I really, I try very hard to not just pick it up. Because as soon as I pick this up, as soon as I move it, the stuff starts falling off. Okay. And there's just a lot. All right. So, so this is where you would take it, you'd run to the, the dryer and just stick it right in the dryer. Yeah. The so if Michael will mute me for a second. I can. <laughs> That's better, at least. I'm going to give it a good little shake over here. Oh, it just fell and just snowed all over. Snowing inside, raining outside. I know, Welcome I know. to Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> the snow might be a little less calm in here. I don't know. All right. So now I've got my two strips. I would cut two more if I were making the blanket, but I've got these two. I've got my middle strips. Okay. And then I've got my other strips. So we're going to put some of this together. One of the questions that we got recently when someone was putting together uh, on the I Love Cuddle group. So if you're not part of our I Love Cuddle group, I totally recommend you join it. It's on Facebook. It is a fabulous group. How many here are on that group? Okay. It's a great group of people who 
there's like 14,000 plus people on there now, all sewing with cuddle fabric and all talking about how to make this or that. And we had a lady that was on there recently was talking about her sweet strips and how they had kind of grown as she'd sewn them together. Whole bunch of reasons why that could happen. But there is one way to sort of prevent that from happening. And that would be to measure your strips before you start putting them together. All right. So what I want to do, and you could do this before you cut them apart too, is I know that these, the ones that are the same, should be the same length. I say should be because they could be off different bolts and they might be slightly different lengths. And the variation on bolt width is 58 to 60? Yeah. In fact, let's go over to the other table now. All right. Okay. So I have a table here. Bonus table. Bonus table because I don't have 60 inches wide on my table. And I want to lay this out nice and flat and not shimmy these around and see if they are the same length. And in fact, they are. Great. Okay. So then I'm going to take my other fabrics. And these... This guy is the same. All four of those are going to be the same length. So I only need to measure one of them out for right now. And I'm going to lay it out and see if it's the same length. And it is not. Okay. So do you see it's a little bit, I don't know, Maybe can measure inch. that? Maybe an inch longer? Okay. I'm going to say it's an inch shy. It's an inch heavy. It's too long. Uh, I mean, but it, okay. But it's over. It's over by about an inch. Okay. Okay. I was thinking so it was I'm over gonna... by an inch. And, oh, maybe not oh I inch. see. Yeah, sorry. Got it. No, see, these, no these words, these words. You're using woodworking words with me? Yeah, I'm fired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this back over here. And I'm going to cut off an inch. Because I know these are an inch too long. Don't tell anybody I'm cutting two layers this time. Smashing it flat. Watch out. because I have to come from this direction. I'm doing all the things not quite right, right with that cut. But we're going to pretend. Okay. Okay. So now these I know are the same length. Okay. So let's lay one of these out. And I found that if I lay them not right sides together, it's helpful. So lay them so that they are right side to wrong side or wrong sides together. I like to see the wrong side of it because I can mark it better or just be able to measure it better because I can't see how, all the fuzz doesn't get in the way. But I found that if you put them right sides together because they're so fluffy and they're a little slick, you don't get an accurate measurement when I lay them out. So here I can tack it down. I can kind of move along here and nothing's going to shift down there, which is important. Okay, close enough. I'm going to call that good. Okay, so same yeah. length. So those are right. Now, let's measure this one. I'm going to lay that there and get this to come along. All right, and too long. You see that? Yep. It's quite a bit too long. By the selvage, basically. So I'm going to... I'm going to shove it down just a little so I can actually kind of get an, a little bit more accurate measurement here. Yep, it looks like if I cut it just past the selvage, it will be okay. So I'm going to mark it here because that seems about what the extra is. Mm -hmm. I'll measure this and cut that off. And I'm going to cut that off of all three of my pieces like this. Okay, does that make sense? It does. We're basically like sort of pre-squaring things. Exactly. So now I know that all of these will end up at the same place. And you're doing that before you sew them all together. Before I start sewing them together. Okay. So I'm just, I'm measuring here, the little line that I drew and squaring it up with the edge. Okay. And then I want to do the same thing with all of these. So I'm not going to do that right now but that would do that with all of these strips. So in the end, all of my strips are gonna be exactly the same, okay? So now I know I'm starting with the same length strips, which means that I'm gonna make them work because I know they fit. And they're not, they're not gonna grow on, they can't grow on me, and I won't, I'll know that they started the same, they should end the same, make them work, all right? 
So on here, I've got my pieces. I'm going to need this gray piece here. Well, they're all gray pieces, aren't they? I yeah. need this gray piece and that gray piece and the other gray piece. <laughs> Speaking of selvage, because we just cut the selvage off of that. But yes. in, in general, you don't take the selvage off I of don't. the flux cuddle. No, I just leave it on there. It's just one less cut to make. So really, it's the same with squaring up the strips. I don't do it. It's fine. It would just hide in your seam allowances. It gives you more wiggle room. Okay. So you don't have to measure these to make sure that they're the same size. You could just put them together. This is just a way of being able to keep track that they are actually the same length. Okay. Because the, the fabric is 58, 60 inches wide, which means that it can end up being a little bit longer. Well, you okay? might not know how much your it's like the top stretched. It, right. Right. You wouldn't be able to tell how off you were. Exactly. If, because you don't know how, how off they the were. Because you could start with one piece that was 58 inches and then you try to make it fit to the next one that's actually 60 inches and you're trying to ease in an extra two inches or vice versa and stretch one. Like you don't want to do that. You want to get them to fit, lay as flat as possible. I think it's really important that you, you start with them all the same width before you start sewing. I think that that was. I, yes. I don't, yeah. I, I think, I think it's very helpful. It is for me. So I like to do that, okay? All right, so now I've got my pieces. All of these pieces I know are the same width. Do we have any questions out there? We're good? Okay. Um, so the first thing I wanna do is lay out my back. All right, we're gonna try my new bird's eye view. Okay, let's see if we'll, that'll work. Okay, Pops so this is view. my backing. I've got two yards of fabric. I'm just using two six foot tables that I've got up on bed risers. Super easy way of doing it. If uh, you are looking for a way to do large blankets, I will tell you the six foot table or a ping pong table is your easiest way of doing it. Just because you have the room to lay it out and you also have room to walk around the entire table, which is very helpful, okay? Which is what I'm gonna have to do to get this to lay flat, okay? So really what I wanna do is I'm not gonna get it to lay too flat yet because I want to do Another little thing. So this is another like little prep thing that when if you do all the prep first, it actually works out better. So the way that the strip quilts work is we want to start in the center and build our way out. You don't have to do it that way. I like it that way because it's more consistent. So if I start in the middle and I do these two and then I do these two and these two, I'm only whatever four seams out or whatever by the end or six seams out by the end. If I start the other direction and work my way to the end, I have like 12 seams, which means if it got off, it's way off by the other end. So this way lets me be, I don't have to be quite so fidgety about it and I know it'll turn out okay. So the first thing I wanna do is actually find the middle. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold it in half. That thunder is just lovely. It is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who never I gets it. I was going to say, if you don't know Southern California, for the West example, Coast, the like West we Coast just, in general, very just, rarely do you end up with lightning or thunder. Yeah, so, we just don't get it. Uh, yeah, even if it rains, this doesn't get to happen much. And I grew up in the Midwest, so I'm... Uh, I'm really happy too, actually. Right, because it feels like home for you. <laughs> it totally does. <laughs> and it feels like novelty to me. I'm like, oh, look. It's so fun till there's flooding. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I've marked the half. Or the so cell I, towers go out again. Right. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, don't say it. Uh, <laughs> we had it happen once. So it's not good. Not good. All right, so <laughs> I've marked my half marks. You probably can't see them, but I've got a half mark here and a half mark here. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to figure out where my center strip is going to go. And I know from that picture, this is my center strip. All right, this center strip is about 10 inches. So it needs to go actually five inches on either side of that strip or on that little mark. Okay, does that make any sense at all? It does. Okay. We're splitting the difference on the centers. We're going to line the center of this up to the center of the backing. Yes, but I'm going to line it up in a way that I'm going to actually line up the top and bottom. So because for me, it's easy. that's easier for me to line this up against a line. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here is my edge. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And I'm going to line it up with the edge of it in case that selvage is actually square. And then I'm going to measure in from the other side with my big ruler. And look at this. Oh, it's going to go almost all the way across. It does, because it's a 36 and a 24. Ha, ha, math. It's great. Okay? <laughs> Fabulous. I'm so excited. This, my life just got easier. Nice. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to bump these ruler ends up until they're actually straight and touching both sides. So I've got a mark there and a mark over here. And now my rulers bump each other. See, I can find no better reason to buy a 36 inch ruler than the fact that I'm just able to measure all the way across right here. Got it. Lovely. Okay. The world's your oyster, Teresa. It totally is. It's great. Okay. But I need to measure, I just remember measuring a grunts there. I need to measure five inches up. So I'm measuring that one inch down. So what are we doing? I have to go five inches up from the half mark. I see. Or, yeah. Okay. So now I found out where that's at. So I'm going to hold this down because I use that grippy stuff. So it's going to hold a little bit better. I'm just going to do a light little line right across here, all the way across. So this is what I'm making is my um, like top alignment strip. Okay. So that is five inches from here, which means this will be centered. Got it. Okay. Yep. Not perfectly, but 72 inches is a little bit longer than you need to do the entire quilt. So the finish size technically I think is 68 inches is what it should be. Two yards will give me enough that I should have a little bit of wiggle room to be able to do it. Okay. So next step. I'm going to rotate some lights over here. See if I okay. Can get, um, get a shed this is where we're here. On this one. Okay. So this is one of those things that when you're working with a large piece like this, they can get a little bit squirrely because this is, it's slick. So they like to start to move. Try to keep as much on the table as you can. If you have anything heavy, stick it over there. So, you know, canned foods and that sort of stuff works really well for that. Okay. So now I have a line to align this with, to put my first strip on. These are the same width. How beautiful is that? Okay. So I know that these will fit. The first thing I need to do before I actually base this on, though, is figure out which way my nap is going. This is one of those where you're like, I don't know. Pretty sure it goes this way because more often it feels smooth this way. If you can't tell, it doesn't matter. All right. I'll repeat that forever. Okay. okay. So that there. Okay, and I will say that this is not a perfect match because I really like the fawn, so it's a slightly off. What is this? This is more blue, and this is more something. Wow, I don't, I don't know how you want to talk about that. That might be considered a warmer. This is a. It actually seems like it's almost. In, okay, so in the camera, it looks purple. So it looks purple. Yeah, it's gray. So let me, let me see. <laughs> I want to see again what the the color they suggested what was steel. As and soon I use as you get that binding layer in between. Oh, it won't matter. Yeah, it's close enough that I don't care. But like, I really did choose this because I like this fabric, <laughs> not because it was the best match. Okay. All right. So now I've got it up. You can get some heavy stuff over here. You can keep this up onto the table if you want. So it's a little bit easier to deal with. I just kind of accordion fold it up here. All right. And then I've got this. So I check the naps. The naps match. Let me get this nice and straight. And get this on here. So now I have a guideline. So when I'm doing this, I'm going to spray the back of it. And I'm going to put it down. And I know exactly where it should go because I've marked it. This will help. So if you want to keep marking those lines as you go, you absolutely can. Otherwise, you can just try to sew straight. Okay. Easier said than done. That's what I, <laughs> I try. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of parchment paper, unbleached baking paper, whatever, just scrap paper. This is an easy way to get kind of cheap scrap paper that you can use. I'm going to put it under here so that I don't get any of the basing spray on the table. If you get it on the table, warm water, soapy water will totally get it off just fine. Okay. 
Look, I have an extra lid for the other grippy. <laughs> uh, same, same. <laughs> same, same. All right, so I'm going to spray the back of this, and I'm going to lay it down. All right, this is how we start all strip quilts. Start in the middle, build out from there. All right, the key is really to not spray too much, but enough that it sticks. Okay, now, come on down to the end and watch this. This is where people like to just flop this down. And I'm going to say, if you just lower it, it's better. Okay, so then I'm going to get it in place. I've got my line. You can see it. The cut all smack down. Smack down. Exactly. Nice. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. So you can see it's tacky enough that I can lift it up and reposition it if I need to. Uh, we've talked about it before. Make sure so if this doesn't stick too well, I'm going to know that it was kind of an old can. It will age. So make sure that you're not buying way more. Um, basting spray than you need because they it can, make a smaller size they make can. a smaller one yeah, yeah. They make a half size so can. if you're going to make a big quilt you want a big big thing of it but we have noticed you really don't lay it on thick at all no because i'm really just holding it for a second i don't really care if it sticks at all except that i want it to stay there while i'm while i take it over to my machine and sew it so and i'm not going to move it at all until I, I'm going to go sew it. So right now I've got it in position. Now my next strip, I'm going to look at my paper. I just had it. So I'm going to look at my paper. Again, I've got this strip here. The next strip is going to be a dark strip. And again, my nap was going this direction. So if you wanted to write a little arrow on here, so you could remember your nap is going that way, you absolutely could. Okay. So because I'm right-handed, I always want to work further away from me for pinning. So I'm going to get my nap, make sure it's going that direction. And I can kind of see that it was because of the sheen. So I'm going to put it here because that's where I want my next strip to be. So I like to lay it out so I can see it. I know it should match on both ends because we took care of that at the beginning. We saw, yes, it works. So if I do it like this, here's my middle strip. Here's my next strip. Looks just like it. Okay, that's what we want. So you're going to kind of double check yourself the whole time. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip this over right sides together. So you can see having a six foot table and the risers will make things a lot easier. Yeah, those those really help with the working height. Honestly. They really do. And they're, they're table, or table risers or bed risers work mm -hmm. pretty well. And they're not they're not an expensive uh, investment and well worth it. Yeah. All right, you're, so now you're investing in your back. Right. <laughs> exactly. All right. So now I've got my pins. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start pinning here. So I know because we measured that my ends are going to match. So I'm going to pin one here and I'm going to come oh. all the way here. And I'm going to make this fit over here. Okay. Because we know it should fit. We checked that. So now in the middle here, which is where basically the fold is in the fabric. I'm going to make the match here and pin it. So this is a project where we're putting the, the naps in opposite directions. So they're going to not want to lay together because they're going opposite right now because they were in the same folded over. They're in opposite directions now. So this kind of pinning will help a lot. I'm going to pin in between, in between, and just keep pinning in between. Okay, and these are those clover flower head pins that come in the box. And I know that they have those here too. And these are my favorite. Um, just because they're heavier duty and I can pin through all of this, these layers, super easy. So if I were to use, I don't know if I have any other pins sitting here, but if I were to use even the ones that are like the red and the um, peach on either side, which are still clover and they're good pins, they will bend more than these will. So these are the nice heavy duty ones. We talked about that on the uh, the Clover episode, which was mid-January. Oh yeah. We talked right about how, road. That, right, and how, it how was strong, it was during road. road, but it's how strong the <clears throat> metal shaft is here, that it's thicker, so it doesn't bend, all right? And that's the way it should be working, it's not bending like that, okay? So this is fairly sparsely pinned, 
mostly because I don't want to take the time right now to pin it more than that. But if you are new to sewing cuddle, I would pin probably twice as much. Okay, just because this is on the stretch of the fabric. So it's more likely to misbehave <laughs> while you're trying to sew it. All right, so let's go sew. All right. So we're backing up a little bit. You definitely did not choose to use batting for right. our demo. Right. And yet the, the uh, sample that we have that over here mm -hmm. absolutely has batting in it. Yes, it does. What are, you can do what it is either your way. choice? How, okay. do you, how do you make the decision? Okay, good question. So there are a couple of reasons why you would want to. So batting will add uh, weight to it. And that may be exactly what you want is a heavier blanket. Okay. So if you are living someplace that's nice and cold, that, that heaviness is super nice. If you are somewhere where you just want it, uh, like the softness of the cuddle and not the weight of the cuddle, having it so it's only cuddle is better. So it's kind of just a personal choice. The other thing that can factor into it is how heavy duty your machine is. So if your machine is a higher end machine that can just like haul through the fabric just fine, adding batting won't make it a big deal. If you're working on a lower end machine, a more basic machine, adding that layer of cut or a layer of batting can definitely make it harder to get through your machine. So, and if you can't adjust your presser foot pressure even more so, that it's gonna be something that you're gonna fight a little bit more than we want you to, all right? So that's why you can also do this where you sew all of the strips together, just like our sweet strip throw, and then actually do a throw style. So if you're working on a very low end machine that doesn't like to do layers of cuddle, that's a great way of doing it because you're only ever sewing two layers at a time. Okay, so that's your three ways of doing it with batting, without batting and throw style. All right. Okay, so I'm going to bring this over. We're going to try to sew this. I say try because it's always a gamble. Is it, uh, is it a gamble? <laughs> I feel like I it is. You, I feel like you've got this. I feel like I might. Um, <laughs> so first we're going to set up the machine. I've got my, I switched out my thread. Oh, I forgot to actually thread the needle. So we're going to do that. And then I've got my. Oh, uh, that was so good. Fancy one. I know. I love that it works now. This is my original digital dual feed. Robin told me the name of it and it is the. Oh, it is a compact digital dual feed, which you the can tell one. it is compact. So much shorter and um, narrower. Okay. Nice. So there you go. There's your comparison. Pretty easy to tell the difference. So this is the one I've been working with. And we were talking this morning that sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating because the fabric will get caught under here. And I know other people have complained about that more than I have. Um, so I was telling her about that and she said, oh, have you seen this? And I said, you, no, please. Can, can you flip them over to show the belt? This is a, a, a rare opportunity to kind of look at how the, this actually works. So this is my well-loved one. Let's see if we can get the light to work out well. So this is the um, belt part of the the foot that actually feeds the fabric through the machine Okay, so versus a walking foot which will have little grippy bits on the bottom that will help pull it through That work with your feed dogs. This works with your feed dogs in a way that it's just a continuous belt that goes around Works really well and they are available on um, baby lock machines. I love it Okay, so it's called the digital dual feed and the compact. So we're gonna try the compact because why not? Sounds like right. a deal to me. It sounds like something else to add to my list. Hey, Robin, keep a track of this. <laughs> All the things that Teresa, Teresa will buy. She has a Because really, I find things and I'm like, oh, that's great. Okay. So I've just hooked it around the side, screwed in that little screw there, and I'm going to go ahead and tighten it with my screwdriver. Because I will tell you that sometimes with walking feet or the digital dual feed, they'll work themselves loose because there's so much um, movement happening there. We'll go ahead and plug this in. This is another place that things go awry for people. They forget to plug this in. Not that I've ever not done that. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Never. Never. <laughs> Never. Not today yet. Okay. Never. So I'm starting in the middle. I'm going to keep all of my fabric here on the table. This is super important. Do not keep it in your lap. Keep it on the table so that the weight stays off of your needle. Because when it's in your lap, it's all pulling towards you, which means you're bending your needle. And what happens then is your needle smacks the side of it and breaks. And we don't want that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead. So I've got my first layer here. My second layer is on there. 
I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And I'm doing a half inch seam allowance. So a half inch on the baby lock is kind of the edge of this foot where the edge and the red line intersect. Oops. Let's talk I about bring that up. stitch. So this is a three millimeter stitch length that I'm going to do here. Oh, it's so good. Okay. So I'm What's just going to so come good? on the, just the so, so feet? nicely. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. So right. I'm just bringing this along. I have everything up on the table and I'm just going to keep my hands here where I want to keep this straight. I'm going to pull this so that it, because you see it wants to kind of do this. We can't really sew it that way. So I'm going to hold it here and I'm going to keep a hand at the back. And I'm just going to bring it through. So that second row of pins will stay over on the left side and can stay out of the way. And then as I come through here, I'll take these pins out as I go. Okay, and if I just kind of keep this straight, that's really the important part. Again, I'm just gonna whiz right by that. Okay. If that starts to get off, I need to reposition. It might be that I just needed to pin more. Okay. So I'm gonna. As soon as you see it starting to bunch up, you have as to soon as you lift up the foot and start over. Exactly, exactly. And if it grows a little bit, that's we don't want it to do that. So the way to prevent it from growing is to have a stiletto, which is my by Annie stiletto. And I can keep this and I can kind of hold it here and let it feed underneath the foot. Okay. So either way, we want to keep it straight as we're moving our way through the fabric. So you can see it kind of wants to, you know, do its thing. And that's because we don't have any uh, stabilizer in here. So really the uh, batting works as a stabilizer as well as trying to make it heavier. So if you want to stabilize it, you can use batting, you can use flannel, you can use um, quilting cotton, anything in between there, you would base that down to your backing before you start sewing. Okay, and I just want to stop every time before I get to a pin so that I'm not sewing over it. What's your thought process for using a half an inch seam allowance as opposed to a quarter of an inch seam allowance, which is sort of the quilt standard. quilter standard? Well, the reason we like to use a half inch seam allowance is because this one under here will always move. So you see my seam allowance there and then my seam allowance here. Oh, yeah, I've lost almost an eighth of an inch. Right. So okay. if I'm trying to do a quarter of an inch, they're almost a quarter of an inch difference. I mean, there's really like, it goes clear over here. So if I've done this a quarter inch, I'm a lot more likely to miss a piece there. So if I do a half an inch, I'm okay. I've got it. I've got it covered. And that's really what we want to do. So every time we stitch one of these lines, we're going to go back and make sure we caught it. If we didn't, we're going to stitch over it again. Half an inch seam allowance is your tolerance. Yes. Basically. Yes. What, exactly. what, what can you tolerate? Exactly. Okay. I'm going to keep that nice and even. I will say that like this machine is um, the, the crescendo is what I'm sewing on today, which I absolutely love, but it will power through pretty much anything because it's just got a lot of oomph. But if you're working on a machine that doesn't have as much oomph, the really important thing is just to take it slow. So one way that you can do that is up here this little knobby here, just slow yourself down, okay? Make it go slower. I can go a little bit faster on this because I've sewn a lot of cuddle and it's a good machine that would just kind of work it through. So I can do that, but yeah, feel free to slow down. It's really the part that a lot of people get overconfident and uh, that's when it starts to mess up. That's when it will grow on you. All right. We so, don't want that to happen. So back to the three styles of quilting, yes. batting, no batting, and then throw. Yep. That there's a question. Okay. Why are answers. why are we quilting it to the back fabric as we go? This is the quilt as you go method. Yes. Right? Yep. So literally we're just quilting it as we go. Uh, so the reason I prefer to do it this way, so this is my preference is to do the quilt as you go method and then we'll bind it, which I'll show you in just a second. We'll work through the binding just a little, um, is that it will hold the two sides together. So what I have found is that when you do the front and you sew all of those pieces and then you sew it like envelope style, right sides together, flip it inside out like a throw, the front actually weighs more than the back because of all the seam allowances. 
So what ends up happening is that they tend to pull apart more than normal throw wood where we used two of the same fabrics. Got it. Does that make sense? Because like the literal weight of the fabric is different. So that to me it's makes just a the, difference. It's just the, the amount of fabric that's in the seam allowance is different, which doesn't right. necessarily seem like it would be a lot. And yet. And yet it adds it will up. It definitely sag, right? Yes. Gotcha. That's what I found. And so the, the way that some people deal with that is that they will uh, go back and they will top stitch those seams. So stitch in the ditch along those seams to get the back to adhere to the front. So if you have a low end machine and it doesn't want to do the binding and all that stuff, you could absolutely do it that way and still have the same look of it because it would be quilted through. Also, there are lots of times that you can just let them hang and it's fine. Like it really is very personal choice and it depends on the fabrics that you're using. So yeah, that's why I like to do it because I don't like to worry about the hang at all. Um, when you use the batting in there, can. the batting has specific instructions about how often it has to be quilted. Yes. Otherwise the batting will fall apart too, Yes. Right? Yeah. So sometimes if you're using a polyester batting, it's every 10 inches, which you're doing less of here. So it absolutely works and you don't have such an issue. But sometimes people will put like designs in here. They'll stitch in between. They'll like add whatever, you know. Um, but I've never heard of anyone having an issue with their batting falling apart in something like this because you've stitched it often. Does that make sense? Know. Absolutely. Okay. So now let's try the next row. So I'm going to show you what the next step is. And then we're going to do a little bit of binding on the side, okay? Because we're going to run out of time. Always, always running out of time. You could just stay here for days and do this. Bird's eye view again. Here we go. Oh, that's not the one I want. Okay. We need a little skinny one. I need a little one. But first, I have to base step. this up. So basically, the next step is that I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this a little at a time. What you can do is a big, huge piece. So you can see how this wants to keep falling. Okay. So get it up on the table. <laughs> Michael just switched the behind the scenes camera. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see where my where my perch, my where perch you is. Are. <laughs> <laughs> How you can get a view at home. Okay. So I want to get this nice and flat. We talked about it. One of the tricks that um, we have used, oh, dang it, there it went again. Um in classes. Yeah, just, just all just slid off again. Um that we've used in classes is using um a picnic cloth, a tablecloth that has the felt backing. You put that on your table and the felt will, it, the fabric will stick to the felt sort you of. tape it down, but with the felt side up. Yes. Got you. Because okay, the felt so is a little grippy. That makes sense. All right. Okay, I'm going to go. I suppose if you owned a table like this, you could just use grippy on the entire table. You could, <laughs> but that would be a mess. Okay. Um, the grippy too, I, I really love it. It will wear off after a while when you use it a bunch. So I've had to reapply it to rulers, but it's like every six months. So it's great. I love it. Uh, okay. So I'm using a different can because that stuff doesn't stick as much. So it looks like Teresa's in for a new, a new can of OD. I talked about it and then it was like, yeah, let me show you how it doesn't stick when it gets old. Yeah. Thank you. Also, that's the, that's the other size of can. Yes. It's <laughs> right. available. So that's good. If you're, if you're, if you're not into full on blanket production <laughs> and you don't okay. want to waste, buy more than you can use. Right. And this one I got us. just last week. So should be, should go. be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead. So watch this. Okay. There. That. All right. So the next step is uh -oh. I've sprayed the back of it. Now we're going to flip it up. So I want to get this flat. So I'm going to flip this up. Okay. And I just want to pull this over and I want to push this this direction because you can see when it folds over here, because it's a knit, it has like a hump. So if you just fold it over, you're not going to get it in the right position. So I need to fold, I need to grab it, pull it, and then kind of push it down. Okay. <coughs> so then, then we get to do the smack down again. And again, I know that they're going to match. Okay, and even if my seam wasn't perfectly straight, look how perfect it looks. It's beautiful. It hides in the, it hides in the hide. <laughs> I love it. So the next thing we're going to do is one of these strips. So I would do the same thing. This is a little one. So I'm like, ah, which way does it go? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay, it feels just fine. We're going to pin it, put it on here, pin it across and sew it. I would suggest that, truthfully... 
if it's your first time doing one of these blankets or even, you know, you just like it better this way because I tend to, is that I will actually build them out from the center. So I'll put this middle strip on and then I'll put a dark gray and a dark gray and then a light gray and a light gray and a middle gray and a middle. Does that make sense? So that I kind of just build out from here. One of the things that I've seen happen in the classes when we've done the larger quilts is that it gets off somewhere and you don't opposite it because you've gone four across and then you're like, which one is next? Oh, it's a light gray. Oh, and then you don't notice it until you're done. And then you're like, oh, they're not symmetrical. And at that point, it's too late because nobody wants to take that out ever. Okay, so show the back of this, if you don't mind. So once that that's... was the question. Absolutely. Here comes that you are answering the question at hand. Oh, good. What does that look like on the back? So that's what it looks like on the back. Okay, so this is one of those places that you can come back over with your stiletto if you want to and kind of scritch that stuff up. That stuff being the nap. Okay, and just kind of soften that line. All right, and it kind of just hides your seam completely, or you can leave it and you'll be able to see it slightly. Got it. So this is covered. This is where I scratched it and this is where I didn't. Okay. So the whole back will be just like that. So I like it when I kind of cover up the seams and you don't really notice it, but it's a tedious little task. Could we see the, well, I just yawned. Sorry, folks. Um, <laughs> could we see the whole back of the, the, the quilt, the simple yeah. quilt? Yeah. Let me drag that over here. It's so much heavier because of the batting. It's very interesting. Okay. So this is the way it will end up. So here's my little strip. Can you see the little lines that are in uh -huh. there? Okay. But you can't, you can't tell really how perfectly straight they are. And I will tell you that it's hard to get them perfectly straight when you're doing something that's this large and this heavy. It just is really difficult to get it straight. But what I love is that if I use a Lux Cuddle, no one is any wiser. It looks perfect the way that it is and this is definitely one i had my stiletto and then i lost it again um Not but it. if you fluff up i know i just what 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 did i do oh, oh I think is that I just it? Heard it hit the ground i think it was Darn it. i don't know it's gone now it's gone forever <laughs> you might have a couple this is what i might have yeah i might have like four of them um you can just fluff this up and it will totally Hide all that. Disappear. Yeah. If you do it with a stiletto, it's a lot faster than your fingernail, though. So there's that. All right. So let me show just one little part of the binding. Okay. Because right. I did want to show you. Robin. So you're just going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's here. Come She's here. watching. Let's test okay. this. <laughs> all right. So what I want to do is I want to cut up. So this was my, remember, we hit, we hit away my binding piece so that I wouldn't accidentally cut it and make a strip out of it. Okay, so I'm going to cut one of those. So the binding is cut one and three quarter inches, is what we tell you in the pattern. I know a lot of people cut it at two inches. I cut it at one and seven eighths inches. Um, so really, it depends on what you like. I would say if you're new to sewing it, cutting it a little bit bigger is a super great way to get started working with it um, because it gives you a little bit more wiggle room. The reason I wanna show you some of the binding today is because it's one of the places that we get a lot of questions about how it works and what you need to do and what it's supposed to look like. So I'm gonna cut a whole strip. I vary between whether I want to cut it with a rotary cutter or my blade. I'm cutting it with the blade and without marking it first because the, the, time. Cut it, the rotary cutter. You're cutting it with the yes, I'm yeah. cutting it with the rotary cutter. Sorry, I'm cutting <laughs> yeah. it with the rotary cutter and without marking it first because we're in a hurry. Okay, what would I tell you to do? Not that. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> you you can't see me shaking my head right now. <laughs> you should see my kids. They're like, really, mom? Really? <laughs> All those years. I'm like, sorry. Okay. So let me find my edge. <laughs> there we go. There it is. See, I told you it wasn't sticking very well. Okay. So the one thing that I do is, because I've got my piece cut, when I've got this all done, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zigzag it. So we're just going to do this small little section. I'm going to show you how it, how it basically works. Um, and I will tell you, too, that one of the ways that I learned to bind is that I took two squares of cuddle fabric and I sewed them together like this. I zigzagged them together and then I bound it and then I cut off the binding and I did it again. I cut off the binding and I did it again. So it ended up just being a piece that I threw away, but I got to practice that binding numerous times and that was super helpful. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and zigzag this. I've got a five wide, five long zigzag. And I'm just gonna kind of just baste these edges together. So when I'm doing a cotton quilt, I do this with the serger and with the uh, uh, cuddle quilt. I'm gonna do it with just a zigzag stitch. And what that does is it just holds that edge together really nice and neat because we're gonna use a half inch seam allowance, cuts cuddle, then it won't um, matter how big that is. So you can see it's a big, huge stitch, totally works. Okay. Got it. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I like to sew it from the back to the front because we're gonna do it machines, uh, with machine the whole time. You can absolutely sew it to the front and bring it around to the back. And I'll show how that, how that works in just a minute, why you might choose one or the other. Okay, so I'm gonna put my piece on here. Oh, I have one other thing to show you guys. So these are jumbo wonder clips. Oops, there's a regular wonder clip. And this is one of my favorite new products that Clover has come out with. And it has six of the big guys, 10 of the um, medium ones, the regular wonder clips, and 10 of the tiny ones. So it's a great way to kind of get a, a taster of how they all work differently. I really like these two. Um, these I've used for English paper piecing and for holding papers together. So <laughs> wonder clips are great for all sorts of things. But these big guys, I will tell you, are super great for the binding. So we're going to use a few of those. Okay, and then I use one pin because what I want to do is I want to have a pin that I'm going to hold it in place. So this would always be my starter and I'd want to leave like a 10 inch tail. Okay, if you a, are, a tail. that's, out, that's, that's out what this here. is. Yep, gotcha. So I want to leave a tail here. If you are familiar with quilting, it's basically you're going to quilt very, or you're going to bind it very much the same. The biggest difference is you're going to have a raw edge and we're going to leave that. So I'm going to go ahead and have this flat, try to get everything up on the table again. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip this in here. And what I like about these big guys is that they clip so much. So comparatively, I used to always use these little guys and it doesn't hold down nearly as much. So this really holds it like flat because what happens when I'm sewing is this likes to pull up. And when I use these, that works a little better. All right. So that's pretty a fairly new discovery to me. It's in the last couple of years. I was like, these are great. And it really was because um, a student had brought them to a class and was using them. And she didn't have regular wonder clips. So she brought these and I was like, that was magical. It seems like where it's, you're getting most of the tension on this clip is all the way out here, mm -hmm. which is basically the same place as your second row of pinning when you double pin. Exactly. Okay, that was the lid and not the stiletto. Dang it's right it. here. You found it? Okay, good. Thank you. I was like, I'm gonna need that baby. All right, so now I've got it in. I have my pin, I'm gonna take that out before I start sewing because I don't wanna sew over my pin. Again, it's a half, oops, a half inch seam allowance and a straight stitch this time. Uh, okay. Three so, and a half by two and a half. Oh no, thank you. By three. That's why I have three you here. Three and a half by three. All right, so one of the things that I do differently too. So we have a binding with cuddle booklet and you'll find all of the technically right ways of doing it and then I do it slightly differently so I actually do my seam allowance at three eighths of an inch on the um the binding because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room and I think that's probably why people cut it at two inches as well because you don't have to be perfect that way okay so I'm just keeping it nice and flat the binding will sometimes grow and I don't really care I just release the wonder clip and let it move a little okay it's one place I get less finicky about it. So I'm gonna take that out as I go, make sure that this stays nice and even. If I'm having a harder time keeping it even, this is when I can stick a pin in here and I can kind of aim for that. And then I'll take the pin out 
Okay. I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to stitch all of this down. So as you go, you're going to stitch this all the way around your thing. I would suggest that you practice on something small, like I said, first, get the technique down and then do your big quilt because you will be surprised at how easy it is to actually assemble the whole quilt. And I know that the binding is something that people can sometimes get frustrated with. So practicing Probably. just a little bit <laughs> before <laughs> she laughs. Uh, before <laughs> yeah, it happens. So practicing a little before you do the real deal is a good idea. All right, so we've stitched it to the back, half inch seam allowance, three millimeter stitch length. Now we're gonna bring this over and to the front, okay? And this is where people are like, wait, you're not gonna roll this edge? I don't roll the edge. I know there are people who do with cuddle and I think it's crazy sauce. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Because a cuddle doesn't fray. Cuddle doesn't fray. It's not gonna do anything on there. It's, it looks nice and smooth. I don't, yeah, I don't mind at all. Especially if you've cut that edge, not with the rotary cutter, it ends up like without the haircut. Right? Yes. So yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold this over. If you were doing this on a, like a cotton quilt, you would go up to the corner. So off the corner, I don't have a corner. Never mind. You don't have a corner. <laughs> you no would so along, so up to the corner, do your little flip flip thing, just like a regular cotton binding. So there's lots of tutorials for that. The only thing that's really different here is that we're going to flip this over and we're just going to top stitch it in place. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this under. So what I like to do is get a pin in there. I'm going to get my edge, my raw edge of the fabric to match with the seam that I just sewed. Mostly, I can feel that, I can't see it. All right, so I'm put my foot down, I'm gonna switch back over, and I'm gonna put it at a five and a five. I'm actually gonna shrink it just a little bit, because this is one, because it's thin enough that it's not really, I don't know, it's making a big five stitch length, and I don't actually want a five, because a lot of times cuddle doesn't go through as well, so it ends up smaller. Okay, so here's my, here's my stitching line. Here's the edge of my fabric, and I'm just going to shove it right there, okay? So I'm going to just zigzag right along that edge. Now, can I see where I'm stitching? No, not really. Okay, it is blind sewing for sure. But what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the edge, I'm sticking it in that seam, and then I'm making sure that my zigzag is going to come right down that edge. So the thing that I'm actually looking at is my raw edge here a little bit and really I know that my stiletto is on the raw edge just in so if I'm aiming my stiletto for this little line which is where my zigzag goes this first line on my foot I know I should catch the edge does it always work perfectly no but that's okay and we're just going to do it and you can see I just do a little at a time get it to go so this is the part that's kind of meditative don't rush it um, it's really where things can go a little sideways on you and it's not fun to take out so take your time with it you can do it from the back as well and I'll show you why I choose to do it this way we're having a discussion on that I love cuddle groups about it this morning actually about which way do you bind so for me I like to do it this way because the front is the part that's you're gonna see so I want to get it so that the front looks as nice as possible that it's stitched in the right place all right so when I stitch it from this way, if I get off of where it's supposed to be stitched, from the front I can't really tell, but from the back I can. I'm gonna see. So I'm gonna do something specifically wrong here and I'm gonna pull this too hard because this is something that happens. So if you cut it a little bit bigger or take it a little bit narrower seam allowance, you have a little bit more give here and you can pull it over, but some people will just take it and pull the whole thing over. Don't do that, okay? It's supposed to go to the seam. If you accidentally pull it too far, I'm gonna show you what happens. Okay, and this happens quite a lot when people are working on it in class, because I think that that tension thing is, it's hard to figure out. So what ends up happening is my stitches show up here. So do you see the zigzag? along here, so they should be right along the edge of my binding, like they are here. But if you pull the binding too far, it ends up in your backing, all right? Got when it. it's on my backing, I don't really care, it's on the back. 
if I were stitching this the opposite direction and flipping it to the back so that this were on the front, then all of that I would see. So it's really just my way of hiding if I make any mistakes. So what I like to, as you can see, I'm using white thread. And if I just come along here <clears throat> and I just fluff this, you cannot see the zigzags at all. And it doesn't matter that I used white thread. Truthfully, if I were making it, like for myself, I would use a medium gray thread using white th thread today. But you even, you can't see it in there at all. The white thread is just hidden in there. And then I'm going to come back over here to the same sort of thing. This is really, honestly, one of the keys for doing binding. Because I will definitely get people who ask about it. And they say, oh, I did it and it's so ugly. And it's because they didn't do any fluffing. So it, could, it really smashes it down. But once you do the fluffing, it totally looks beautiful. Just and blends right together. It just blends right in. And you can, like we always did say, just sit down, watch a movie. Just you know, fluff your fabric. Da -da -da. Like, that's what you're doing. It's just, you know, a good time killer. Okay? Absolutely. And it will totally make that nice. If you have to take this out, because I'm going to have to take it out because I have to finish it. Because, you know, you don't bind it when it's one-tenth of the way done. Okay, I just come under here. And I'm going to pop those threads underneath. Okay. Don't try to come up here and find your zigzags. Just come underneath and pop your stitches under. All right. That's my, my trick for the binding, which is definitely not people's least favorite, basically, to take out. And I completely understand why. All right. So then we'll just clean that up and I would restitch it. Do we have any other questions in there that I didn't get to? What was, uh, this is, this seems like review, but it's not. What is the tool that you use, the stiletto? Can you, can you show us yes. the stiletto? So this is the stiletto that I like so much. This is the By Annie stiletto. And the reason I like it is that it has just a really nice handhold. So you can see like when I'm sewing with it and when I'm fluffing with it, it's really easy to hold. So it feels nice in my hand. The end of it is actually sandblasted. So it has more grip than most stilettos would do. So even without sticking the point in there, I can still actually grab the fabric and can control it. I also have a lot of control that if I stab it, I can totally move it around and do whatever I want with it to make it go where I want it to go. All right. So yep. this is why I like this one. It's by Annie. They have it here. Lots of quilt shops have it. Um, I definitely recommend this one over other stilettos for cuddle projects. Okay. So other stilettos are great. This is an awesome one for cuddle. It just works really, really well. All right. I think I got to everything I wanted to. Uh, I'm impressed. Except one little thing. So come around front. Okay. We'll see if we can, <laughs> we'll finish up. All right. So we didn't talk about, we just briefly talked about it at the beginning that we use a 9014 stretch needle, which is really important. Um, it helps so that you don't skip stitches. The other thing is to use a polyester thread because this project, especially we're sewing it without any sort of a stabilizer. That means that the stretch is still gonna be there. So side to side width wise of the fabric, it's still gonna stretch. If you use a cotton thread for that, when that stretches, it's going to break. You can't really go back in there and fix those seams. You have to hand stitch it and that becomes a pain or you stitch over the top of it and stitch down the edge. It's a pain. So I have um, a little sample here of a couple of different stitches that I did. So I want to just recap this. This is um, a regular cotton thread. It's Aurifil. Aurifil is great cotton thread. Okay. But it is not made for, is made for quilting cotton, not for cuddle. So the problem is that it breaks. Oh, wow. You so, barely put any pressure on that at all. Yeah. So the problem is that if you stand on it and you like pull it, stand up, you're just going to break your thread. And that sucks. Okay? Every time that happens, it's going to start unraveling right. and coming apart. And there. then it comes apart between these two layers. So what you end up is a pocket in here is where those holes are. Oh, so wow. you don't want to do that. So I tried a couple of things. This one is a three stitch length. This was a two and a half. And I still don't have to pull too hard to get that to snap. Um, and then this one is actually a stretch stitch, which I can get it to. Yeah, I just felt a break underneath behind. Um, mm -hmm. So this one is a stretch stitch, which will do more. So you could use a cotton, but this takes like five times longer. So I hate it. Um, but <laughs> so I hate it. But let me show you with, um, let me just do a little stitch really quick with this. And we'll see how far I have to um, pull it. Oops, that's a two and a half. Let's do a three. So this is with the Mettler polyester thread. It's a nice stitch. You can see this is the two and a half. 
millimeter. This is the three millimeter. I like to use the three millimeter just because it's kind of safer. Let's see if we can get this to show up. There we go. The difference. So there's, yeah, there, there's a big difference. Okay. So there's the three, there's the two and a half. Got it. Okay. Yep. So I can pull this pretty good and it's not do. Oh, there we go. I got it to finally snap. So you can pull it real hard before it starts to snap. Whereas okay. the cotton, I didn't have to pull it hardly at all before it could snap. All right. The way that you can show this. Don't and go kind of a, straight. Right. So don't, don't pull it too hard, but you can tell this. So sometimes people are like, I don't know what my thread is. The way that you can tell it's cotton. I can just easily pull it and it will break. So it's cotton thread. Okay. If I pull this out of here, this takes a little bit more. There we go. Okay. It sounded different too. Yeah. Honestly. So it really is like the polyester thread. You can see polyester thread is just, it's stronger. That's what it's good for. And it works better on cuddle projects. So make sure that you're using the polyester thread. Um, yeah. I use the Met Metler Metrocene and it's my favorite, but you just want to use a good quality poly. Makes a big difference in the end product and really because it prevents those stitches from breaking. All right. I think we got everything. Briefly. 9014 stretch needle versus yep. universal needle versus a universal needle. Don't use that. If you can't find a stretch, you can use a ballpoint or a Jersey needle. They're very similar, but they are a little bit different and they do different things with the back of the scarf of the needle and the hole of the needle. They really, there's a lot of science that goes into needle production that makes them all work a little differently. A universal needle, you're just much more likely to get skip stitches. And especially when you're top stitching, that becomes an issue because now you have, it's kind of ugly and you have a weak seam. Okay. So 9014 stretch needle, polyester thread. It's important, especially on something like this when we're not using a stabilizing batting in there. Okay. Cause we're still going to have that stretch, which means your, your blanket is going to stretch. If you're having issues with your thread breaking, check that it's not old thread if that happens. Check that it's not cotton. All right. If you really have trouble, you can always top stitch and that'll help. All right. Okay. I think we got Sorry. everything. I think that was a lot of information, right? That was okay. That's almost two hours. It was. Sorry, guys. Big, big Love blanket, you. Big Thank show. you. Okay. <laughs> so we will be back next week. We're doing a much simpler project, quick and easy. We are doing a throw pillow with a zipper, and we'll talk about different ways to put a zipper in to a throw pillow, which will be great. And where are we going to be about that? We are going to be in Alabama. Yes. Indicator, Alabama at Willow Tree Fabrics, um, which I have been to before, and I'm really excited to go back there, too. So we're going to be doing throw pillows from there. If you are interested in learning how to put a zipper into Cuddle, which can use for all sorts of other things, too, that's the one to watch. And then we'll be taking a little bit of a break and coming back. Oh, I almost forgot. We got to tell you some of the stores we're going to. So we've been working really hard trying to figure out which stores we're going to and which states and which ones, you know, want us, which ones deserve us. <laughs> ah, tour, tour planning. So much tour fun. Tour planning. It's super fun. So we are going to, in no particular order, and maybe in actually backwards order, but I'm not sure. So no dates yet to give you guys because we want to get everything firmed up. But I do want to let you know that we will be in New Hampshire at Bits and Pieces, in Virginia, at both Bobbin and Bolt and Patchwork Plus, right? Okay, and in South Carolina at Feather Your Nest. So we are also in plans talking with people in North Carolina and I can't remember Pennsylvania and all sorts of places. Absolutely. So we are still working on that schedule and trying to get it all lined up and we will hopefully announce all of the dates next week. Fingers crossed. Okay. So we'll let you shops. know where we're at. We need 11 stops on the next tour stops. and we for sure got these five. Yeah, four. Four. Was four I listed. These four. Um, <laughs> so we are planning that. We are excited to be there. And um, so all of you who have asked for East Coast, we are finally, we are finally getting there. All right. So we're excited about it. Join us next week. Make sure to go to our blog, download the pattern, download the tip sheets, download the, all the stuff. Make sure to enter and win that National Quilting Month giveaway. Join the I Love Cuddle group. Subscribe so you get alerts for our YouTube lives. Is that all of it, Hawk? That's great. Okay. Winner, winner. Winner, winner. Who is it? Sandy B. Sandy B. Thank you so much for entering, for sharing. And um, you, we will send you a beginner box. Make sure you reach out through our Facebook Messenger and let us know your mailing address, your phone number, email, all that good stuff so we can send you a beginner box. Okay. So, and I think that's it. 
Thanks, everybody okay. here in the live studio Thank audience. You. Thank yes. you, Cotton Blossom. Thank for, you very much to everyone. Blossom Cotton Shop. Blossom Fabric Shop. So in Ridgeland, Mississippi. So make sure if you're in the Jackson area, head north a little bit and come up to the shop. It's really a fabulous shop. I am looking forward to coming back maybe in two years. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll be back until next time. Happy sewing.